Hello and welcome back to my channel, The Little Craft House. If we haven't met before, my name is Nicole and today's project is making these cool little snaky earrings. So I actually found this tutorial sitting in my drafts not quite completed. So I thought I would just finish it off and then share it with you guys. Last week I did a tutorial about checkerboard and at the end I popped in a little um, screen grab from my one of my reels that I'd created and it had a Skinner blend similar to this featured in it. Um, so you guys asked for a tutorial all about how to do the blending. The full tutorial for that will be next week. However, this tutorial today also mentions and talks about it a little bit as well. So thanks for stopping by and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. The colors that I'm gonna to use today are both Sculpey brand, they are Primo Fuchsia and Souffle Sea Glass. Okay, so they are conditioned up and I've put them through the pasta machine to make them um, equal thicknesses. Now, every time I've done a Skinner blend, Normally, what I'll do is just put the two colors together and then start running it through my pasta machine and the colors blend. I usually get comments on my Instagram and um, the shorts that I've done doing that and people say to do them as triangles and that you get a nicer blend. So I'm going to try that today. I don't know how it's going to go, so we're just going to try it. So I think if I fold these in half, And then I don't quite know how to get my triangles. Um, I suppose if I do if I do that, hopefully that works. Um, I might just roll it down a little bit thinner and then I'm just going to start putting it through the pasta machine and I'm just going to do that until it has that nice gradient blend going across. So I think we'll do that in time lapse because it might take a few tries. Okay, I shouldn't have said tries, I should have said a few, um, I don't know, passes I suppose, a few few times going through. Um, so what I've done is set my pasta machine on the thickest setting. Yep, it's on the thickest setting and I'm just going to um, keep putting it through and um, hoping it will work its magic and blend together nicely. Okay, I don't know if it worked easier having the triangles. I think I just like doing it my normal way. Um, so either way of just putting them side by side or doing that triangles works. Um, it's looking a little bit dodge at the moment and it's got some ripples through it, but that's okay. We're going to fix that up now. Okay, so just to fix those little ripple lines, which just happens sometimes um, in the pasta machine, I'm just going to get my acrylic roller and I'm just going to give it a really quick, gentle roll over the top. I'm not really putting much pressure on, just enough to um, smooth it out. You can still slightly see that there, but that won't be an issue. Okay, um, next up I'm going to trim it down so that it is um, more even and more workable for what we're doing today. So obviously, as normal, I will keep all these scraps. They're not going to go to waste. I mean, that's still perfectly fine. That's still that original colour. That's got the blend through it, but that's okay because I will find a use for that afterwards. Okay, so it's not quite squared off there, but that's okay. We can work with that because that will be on the edge, so that will be fine. Okay, so I'm going to be honest with you guys here. Um, I filmed all of that bit up until then for a different project. So um, that project I decided to scrap and do something completely different, but do the snakes now with that Skinner blend instead. So... If I was doing it just for the snakes, I wouldn't have trimmed down those extra bits. Um, it's obviously looking nice and uh, it's looking nice and rectangular, perfect around the edges at the moment. We're going to whack this back through the pasta machine again on the thinnest setting, on the the very skinniest one. Um, 
so ultimately it's, oh, it's got a bit of stuff on it um ultimately i didn't need to cut down all those extra bits but i'd already filmed it i've left it that bit in um yeah so let's just whack it through and then we can get on to the next part okay so that's, whoop, that's on the thinnest setting and then we're just going to pass that through So pretty. All right, so next up I'm gonna grab all these little bits of scrappy clay that I have sitting on my bench here. Doesn't matter if it's a bit dirty, um, a bit gross, <laughs> something that I wouldn't normally, sometimes I've got colors that I wouldn't normally use for things. Um, and I'm just going to um, condition it all up, blend it all together, and it's just going to give me a big um, big bunch of just scrap clay and we're going to use that for the inner part of our snake so yeah um, I've mentioned a few times like I like to save up all my scraps and this is one of the ways that I will use them all right so this lovely brown beige gross color <laughs> um, so what we're going to do now is make it into our snake shape. There's probably too much there. So I'm just going to start by squeezing. If you've got an extruder, you can always use the extruder to get the long snake shape. Um, otherwise, just roll it out by hand. And acrylic tiles come in really handy for this as well because it means that you don't get those little finger bumps happening on it. Um, the little indents from your fingers doesn't do that. Smooth it out. Okay, so when we roll out this, this snake, the base snake, we need it to be thinner than what we want our overall finished snake to be. So we're going to wrap that in our beautiful Skinner blend. I'm just going to chop the end so that it's a nice straight edge to start with. I'm going to get my snake. Hopefully that's long enough. And we're just going to wrap that around. Try and keep it as close as you can. I'm just going to close that gap there. And we'll do that with our second one.
I'm just going to grab my plate back and then I'm just going to re-roll over the tops of these just to um, secure the colour to that internal piece and just to make sure that the seam is all nicely closed. I'm just going to chop off the ends just so you can't see that little bit of the brown sticking out like that. So we need to form our snakes now. Now I've had quite a bit of practice at doing this so I'm not too bad at doing it now freehand. If you do struggle however to get the shape have a bit of a practice first with some of your scrap clay. So what I like to do is roll down the tops and the bottoms so that they're a bit more of a pointed shape and then flatten one end, which is the head. And then you can leave the other one a bit more pointed. And then from that head, we're going to do the curves of the body. like so. Now if you do a practice run with your scraps and you really like it and you think I'll, I'm not going to be able to get it the same again, a hot tip for you is to grab a piece of say baking paper where you can see through it. You can then, oh, I don't have one handy, um, you can then trace the shape on so that you've got a, a template to then go over the top next time. Or you could bake this one as is, and then that way, again, you can then use that as a template to go over the top of. Um, or if you're better at freehand drawing, you can always draw on a piece of paper. If you've got your um, acrylic plate handy, that can always go over the top so that they don't stick together. Um, if you form it over the top, and yeah, that's a few different ways that you can get that shape. Let's just move this to the side. Now I'm really happy with that shape actually. Let's hope I can replicate it on these. So again we're just, I think, I'll, I think we'll do the pink as the head. So we're gonna roll that down a bit. So it's kind of like a pencil tip. Roll this end down. showing. I mean the, we don't want the brown showing. And then we're going to flatten the head. Now one of the main reasons that we flatten the head as well is for the ease of getting findings through later. If we left it chunky, um, if we left it the same thickness as um, the body it would be really hard to get um, a jump ring through or a hoop through or however we're going to put it onto findings afterwards um, so that's why I like to flatten the head it makes it a little bit thinner and easier for those findings
Now I want to do this one in the opposite direction to this so that when I make them earrings they'll be going in the different direction. So I'm going to start this time going this way first. I just can't stop fiddling with his tail. It's not quite how I want it to be. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not happy with that tail. Okay. All right, so um, this one here, got a few little cracks in him. So probably, I'll probably just keep that one for myself. The rest of them, I'm going to get my little silicon tipped um, uh, tool, silicon tipped rubber tool. Um, here um, I'm going to clean that bit of dirt off the end and then I'm just going to try and smooth out any of those little um, fingernail marks that I've left in there um, looks like there's a little crack there too so I'll just try and close that up a little bit um, and then I shall pop them in the oven for baking Okay, so our little snacks are out of the oven and they are ready to be drilled. Uh, because of this design, we don't have to sand them. So that is one of the major benefits of doing this design. So yeah, let's just get drilling. I'm going to use my Dremel drill. Um, I've got that attachment on there and ready to drill the holes. Now they are all drilled, they are ready to be assembled into earrings. And I've chosen to use these hoops today. I like these hoops because they are simple and it really just makes the snakes the feature. Um, I could, a lot of my other earrings I use different styles of toppers, but yeah, for the snakes I really do like just the hoops. And so that brings us to the end of today's tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed watching me make these little snakes. And as I mentioned earlier, if you'd like to see a full tutorial on the blending process, I will have that next week. So thank you for joining me and I shall see you again next time. Bye.